Does anybody maybe wonder why I kept the make, model, and year of manufacture on the lap sheet? It's already going to be on the work order. Identify the book. Okay, you're going to have a work order you're using the whole time. All right, so you know what bike we're working on. So you get familiar with the make, years, and models so that you're able to come up to a yellow dirt bike and go, well, that's probably a Suzuki because it's yellow. If it's blue, it's probably a Yamaha. If it's white or red, it's probably a Honda. If it's green, it's probably Kawasaki. Because you, I want to see you guys learning about all the bikes that we work on. So I want everybody in here to be able to, at the end of this lab, go up and go, that was an RM250. This was an RM250. Maybe you want to even add the year. This is a KX250. That is a, a blaster, and I don't even have it memorized. I think it's called YFS, but I, I might be wrong about that. YS. YFS, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Blaster. That's not what it's called. Okay? That's a RM85. Or so I'm getting you guys before. I'd like to see the same thing happen in the future when we do RC51, GSXR1000. You know, and, and really getting that terminology down. It's going to be good practice for you. But the big reason I left on the lab sheets is you guys got to remember this is your potential to use this as your portfolio for when you go to look for a job. If you took your lab sheets in, and wanted to say, hey, look at, you know, what type of work, uh, Mr. Bach, would you be wanting me to do? And he says, oh, I'm having you doing oil changes and stuff. Well, hey, why don't you take a look at some of my labs? I've worked on this, I've worked on that. And so here's this whole document that's for you to kind of show the type of work and the vehicles you worked on. Okay? All right, so that's why that's on there. Um, all right, so I'm just going to kind of start to run through this. What I prefer right now is if you think you can write fast enough and not get to the next question, that's up to you, but most likely I'd like you to listen through as I go through here. What must you uh, make sure to check before fully, remove, before fully removing the fuel tank? So I'm saying, before I remove this fuel tank, what's something that I want to make sure and check? Any that. ideas? Can I have the fuel tank off this bike? It's what? Like, like you want to check the lines, make sure nothing's like broken on there. You want to make sure you have the head kind of off. Okay. So for us as professionals, when a vehicle's not in operation, we have a way to shut the fuel off for transport or storage. What do we always do? Shut it off. It's in the off position. Everybody agrees with that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of set this on here real quick. Nothing fancy. Uh, before I take this off, I'm saying there's something you should check. And so if, is, it a, is it something that's not in the service manual, but we've realized as technicians that it's possibly overlooked? No, is that, that seem the rationale? I'm trying to get oh, you to yeah. buy out to it. Yeah. I need to get you to go, I'm sold out to this idea, right? Okay. A leaking fuel valve, or another term for this is called a petcock, okay? If in the off position, fuel will still come out of here, what do we know about that fuel valve? Damaged, weak, needs replaced, okay, repaired, overhauled, any term you want, right? It, pay attention to this. When I take this, when I take this tank off, I'm, I'm going to have some fuel drip, okay? And I'm probably not going to notice that there might actually be a problem because it's just a drip, a drip, a drip, a drip. I'm going to take this, I'm going to transport it, and most likely this is going to go out of sight, out of mind. I'm not even going to consider it again, and I'm going to do all the other work on the bike. Now I go to put the bike back together. If this has a leaky fuel valve, it will over flood the engine and ruin the, the work that you did. It's just not going to be right, okay? So here's how I do this. For me, I take the fuel valve, thinking ahead of time, especially like maybe the night before, and I put a clear piece of fuel line on here, run it in a loop, and tape it to the top of the gas tank or something so that I have like a six inch loop on here, okay, of clear fuel line. Then the next morning when I come back, if I see any fuel in that line at all, what do I know about the valve? It's leaking. It's leaking. Now you can do this on any motorcycle out there. On dirt bikes and four wheelers, it tends to be a really nice thing to do because our customers aren't using them on a daily basis. Okay, so if they don't use this for 30 days or even six weeks or something like that, think about that. All that fuel goes into the carb. The carb can't hold the fuel anymore. Does anybody know on a, on a five gallon uh, gas tank about how much that weighs? The fuel? Any idea? Is that two and a half pounds per gallon? It's 10. I think it's about 10 pounds a gallon. You guys could Google it and be specific, but let's just let's be dramatic, okay? So 10 pounds a gallon, that's 50 pounds of weight on that little tiny fuel needle in the carburetor. A lot of weight? 
Yeah. yeah. So the idea here is, is that if we shut the fuel off, the, there's no weight on the carburetor. So if that's, if that's weak, if it's bad, if it's leaking and you leave that on, it will drain all five gallons through the carburetor. Sometimes uh, on a, on a two-stroke engine, if the port is completely closed or the reeds are really, really tight in good shape, what it wants to do is fill up the airbox. Okay, one way or another, would you agree it's a problem? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that I think that you should test and verify the condition of the fuel valve. That's the kind of answer I'm looking for for number four. What should you make sure and check before fully removing the fuel tank? Test that the fuel valve does not leak in the off position. Okay? All right, so we're going to start pulling body work off, and we take seats and brackets and different things, and now I get to a point where I say, okay, I'm going to... I'm going to go store this somewhere, okay? When this fuel tank is empty, I can take a cable tie. These guys have already started this. This is satisfactory to me. I'm happy with this. They don't even need to be real tight. This plastic, touching this piece of plastic is not going to be damaged, okay? Uh, if possible, you would take two panels with graphics and have them face away from each other. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that way it's less likely to be touching. But we can put a zip tie through this and we can even hang this fuel tank up here as well. All right. Deal? Yep. Okay, so the question, the next one says, well, where, uh, where's a good place to store removed body work? So all of these places here, you guys might have taken those and probably put them in baggies, which is totally satisfactory. But you know what I like to do? I will get my panel off and I'll just, or my seat off, and I'll just take the bolt and real quickly just thread it back in a couple turns on the on the fastener. So my my what I'm what am I looking for there on number five? Remember where they're at. What's that? Remember where they're at. Where's a good place to store the removed body work? In the back. Back in the removed hole. Does that sound sound right? Back in the removed hole. Okay. Oh. I put, we put it on the wall. In the frame. What's that? I put them on the frame. Faster back in the frame. Okay, but to give it an all-encompassing answer, you can just tweak that to say back in the hole. Because would that would that make sense then on a Harley? Yeah. Would it make sense on a snowmobile? Yeah. You know, in a labeled baggie. But our our thing here is is where is a, a good place to store. So either one of those are satisfactory. Because um, I'm not asking. Uh, about one particular piece. So when you say frame, like all the body work that came off of this, this is a gas tank. So you're on the right track. I, I think everybody's getting I'm going to move forward. Drain the transmission oil, inspect its level and condition. Can I see your uh, <coughs> hand? This is a running motorcycle. And you got to look at this, and, and how many people are concerned about that? I am. I am. Without the light, it's noticeable, but not as noticeable. Okay, but when I put this light in here, do you notice how just the oil itself gets a glitter? Yeah. Okay, you're always going to have some. This does bother me on this bike because it doesn't have the time from the last rebuild and everything else. So we're going to pay. We're going to make really close inspection when we take this motor apart to see if maybe somebody put a bushing in wrong, a gear in wrong, something to do with the clutch. All the shiny stuff are parts of bearings. Or it's it's metal. It's something. And when it's when it's gold like that, what type of metal is it? Brass. Brass. Okay. When it's silver, what is it? Steel. Steel or aluminum or any any of the above. Right. Right. Okay. So this you're always going to have some, but I am concerned about this. Now the other thing you want to be careful is your drain plug might have a magnet on it, and that's a great place to look at. I love magnet magnetic drain plugs. Those are great. So here's what I like. So so far I'm going to deal with you guys, the technicians working on this, right? Yeah. I like that they just didn't dump this in the oil uh, drum. What they're doing is they're inspecting it. They're taking a look at it and going, hey, you know, what's going on here? Now, I'm going to ask you this. So how long ago did you um, drain that? We let it drain over lunch. Oh, let it drain over lunch. So it's pretty fresh. So uh, have you wrote on the work order yet anything about the metal filings? We're waiting for it to finish draining. We're going to take it when we get back. Cool. Let it, let it you guys think that would be a good idea? Yeah. And where on the work order would you write it? I would be in here like this. And I, because you guys shouldn't even be turning wrenches yet until you have this, until you have something wrote down, right? Because how do you know what to do? So for here, number one is simply going to be remove engine. Okay, it doesn't say disassemble, doesn't anything. So we're just going to take one chunk at a time. On the back here, um, while I rem everything that I noticed while I was removing the engine, it would go in notes one. Right. So I do this. Pay attention to this. I, because. 
to just write it out isn't enough for me because this is a potential big problem I could overlook. I'd really get uh, some you know, asterisks or stars or something next to it and put metal in trans oil. And then you know, really like spell it out. Because over here, if you put uh, you know, missing hose clamps, then what you'd want to do is you'd want to turn around and come to the front and put hose clamps or fuel clamps or radiator or you know whatever you find along here. Does that make sense? So that's the way that we catch it right away.